Hello and welcome to this reading session of Classical Armenian. In this lecture we will look at a passage from the Buzandaran Patmutyong, the collection of epic histories, which covers the history of Armenia from around 330 to 387 AD, when Armenia was split between Byzantium and Sasanian Iran. The passage we're going to read is about Grigoris, the, grand, the grandson of Saint Gregory the Illuminator, the missionary of Armenia. It is the story of what happened to him while he was on a mission of Christianization in the area of northern Armenia and southern Georgia. So let's look at the text. Yev Ibrev, Uriats, Norogiats, Zamanan Yekeritsis, Kormans, Nyainutsik, Ehas Namichevich Ambar, Banakin, Arshakunvo, Arkain, Maskatats, Voro, Anun, Yur, Sanesan, Kocher. So you find all the uh, annotations of the uh, individual words on the slide. Um, and I will comment some individual forms that are of interest here. The first thing that uh, is interesting is the uh, connection of two inflected verb forms, uh, a feature which is common in original Armenian literature, the asyntactic connection of two verbs. Um, this is nearly absent in authors like Mofsis Khorinatsi, uh, who imitates much more Greek models of uh, prose style. The other thing that is interesting here is in the relative phrase voro anun uh, yur sanesan kocher. Um, here we have a combination of two ways of no, uh, denoting the possessive. Possession. Uh, we have um, the repetition of possessive marking with both the relative pronoun voro and the reflexive pronoun. So whose name of him was called sanesan, literally. So this is the translation of the text. When Grigoris had reformed and renovated all the churches in those parts, he reached the camp of the Arsacid king of the Maskutuk named Sanesan. Now the next sentence reads Yev Yertial Jan Dimanliner Tagavurin Maskatats, Ishanin Basmutyan Zoratsan Honats, Yev Ikats Arajin Nutsa, Sksav Korozel, Yev Avitaranel Nutsa is Christos. So what is interesting here, uh, on the one hand we have uh, Yandiman Linear, which is a typical instance of the many light verb constructions of classical Armenian, in which the lexical meaning is the nominal element and the grammatical information on tense and aspect is given uh, in the um, nominal part of the noun. Um, the other thing is as Christos, a definite NP with uh, a unique uh, reference uh, which does not take the article. This is also typical um, for classical Armenian and we've seen this in the section on morphology and syntax. So he went and presented himself uh, to the king of the Maskutuk, the prince of a multitude of honk troops, and he stood in front of them and began preaching Christ's gospel to them. Asets no sa te saneruk zastvats luan yev unkalan zarajinun yev hnazan de tsan. So the actual sermon that uh, Grigoris gives to these people is rather short. Uh, he said to them, recognize God, uh, and at first they listened and accepted this. Ase is interesting here because, as mentioned in the lecture on verbal syntax, asem is one of the few verbs that regularly occur as historical present, often in sentence initial position. And Luan is an interesting form. Uh, it is a quasi suppletive aorist of the present Lesem. And Unkalan uh, is the suppletive aorist of Und Unim to accept. So this is what we've just seen. He said to them, recognize God, and that's all the sermon. And they first listened and accepted this. Apa, Sksan Knel Zorinsen Christosi. So then uh, they began to examine uh, the laws of Christ. Yev Usan, and they learned Inumane from him, that is Grigoris. Then we have a subordinate phrase, Te Atelie Astutso, Avar Arutian, Avar Arutium, Habstakutium, Spanutium, Agahutium, Ailazurkutium, Zailotskerutium, Zankutium, Ailots, Tatsvatsots. So they learned from him that God despised looting, ravaging, killing, greed, depriving others, eating others' goods, and coveting other people's goods. This sentence nicely shows us uh, the productivity of uh, nouns in Utyun, abstract nouns, which are comparable in their productivity to English nouns in Ing. 
So especially noteworthy is Zylot's Kerutyun, the eating of that of others. This is based on the aorist stem of the verb eat, utem, and the aorist is kera, and the object phrase Zylot's, with the accusative marker z, and the genitive plural of the adjective "il other, meaning that of others, with an unexpressed object. This is a productive process in Armenian. The whole phrase, eating that of others, is then made into an abstract noun with the suffix utyun. So here you have the translation once more, but then they began to examine the laws of Christ and they learned that all these things are not allowed. Then, apa, ais pisi imen irok, ibrev luan, zairatsan and banznorayevasen. So then, when they actually understood or heard what it was like, um, Zairat San, they became very angry at his words, Eyev Asen, and they said, Zivoc Yapsta Kesuk, Zivoc Avariszuk, Zivoc Artsuk Zailo, Iv Ketsuk, Eis Chap An Chap Sorats Basmutyunk. So if we do not pillage, if we do not loot, if we do not take what belongs to others, how shall we, being such a huge multitude of troops, subsist? So let's look at two interesting things here. Uh, on the one hand, we have Zaidatsan and Bans Nora Yev Asen. Here we see once more the rule of a predicate in the aorist followed by Asem in the present. We've seen that in the lecture on syntax. Zaylo is also interesting. Once more, that of someone else. This shows us the same use of Z, the preposition plus a dependent genitive, we have just discussed in Zaylot's Kerutyun. Note also the rhetorical devices of homoioteloiton and parallelism in the phrases zivoch habstakistzuk, zivoch avariszuk, um, and uh, zivoch artzuk zailo. Also noteworthy is the alliteration and rhyme in aischap anchap. Yeftepit biuravor banivk bariok kamer hachel sirtus notza vochinch kamein unkendir linel. Ail asaint mimians. So, and although yevtepet biuravor banivk bariok, that is uh, with uh, innumerable good words, kamer hachel sirtus notza, he tried, he wished to soothe their hearts. Vochinch kamein unkendir linel, they did not wish literally to give ear. Ail asaint mimians, but they said to one another. So here. Once more, we may note the alliteration in the case of Buravor, Banif, Bariok, with innumerable good words. This seems to be a typical feature of this text, so features such as these may go back to oral traditions of storytelling in Armenia. And the text of the Buzanduran is uh, extremely full of such and similar features. It is also full of uh, frequently repeated formulas. Unkendir linel is interesting because it's literally be or become ear putting. So this is another typical light verb construction, uh, a type which is so frequent in Armenian. Note also here as an interesting form, the reduplicated form of mi one in mi means, which goes back to mi, mi and the ending ans, uh, so one another. So this is the translation they said to one another. Yekyal aispisi banif. So having come with such words, yekyal aispisi banif, kami he wishes i kajutene vor suinkinats merots hapanel esmez. So he wishes to deprive us of the valor in the hunt, which is our livelihood. Iski te sema luitsuk, but if we listen to him, yorins kristoneutian, and if we turn to the laws of Christianity, iv ketsuk, how shall we live? Zivoch Yerivar Hitsitsuk, if we do not ride our horses or sit on horseback, is Benutian Orinats Sovorutian's Merots, according to our native customs. So here, noteworthy is the uh, term Kajutene. Uh, this is the ablative of Kajutun, bravery, which is one of these frequent abstract nouns in Utyun that we've already seen, which is derived from Kaj, brave. And this is one of the central terms of pre-Christian ideology in Armenia, because the Kajutyun, this bravery, is something that is given by the gods, usually the dragon slayer god Vahagan, to kings and heroes. So this is the translation. Ail asain, ais horur tayot tagavorine. 
But they said, Ail Asein, Ais Horurt, this is a plan Hayot Tagavorin of the king of the Armenians. A Sayrel Armes, so the plan is to send this guy to us, Zi Aisu Uzmamb, that by this teaching, Chapanestse Uzmer Arshavans Asbatakutian Hini Yasharhin Yurme. So this is the plan to send this man to us in order to keep off our plundering raids in his realm with his teaching. So let's have a look here at uh, interesting things. Armenian, uh, as we've remarked already in the introduction, is uh, full of Iranian loanwords. So let's have a short look at some of them that we find here. Aspatakutyun, raid, an attack on horseback, conceals the Iranian words for horse, aspa, and run, tak. For hin, genitive hini, we may compare Middle Persian hin, a western haina, and Sanskrit sena, army, usually the army of the enemy, not one's own. And in Armenian, the meaning is rather marauder, robber, which may be based on the specific Iranian meaning. Finally, an interesting form is ashhar, uh, which is the outcome of Iranian kshatra, country, related to Sanskrit chatra with a regular metathesis of the root ch in Armenian. So then, of course, the resolution they take is um, come, let us kill him and raid into Armenia and fill our realm with plunder. Ail yikaik esa pakasis tsuk imijo yev mekihais arshavis tsuk avarav esmer ashars le tsuk. So, here, the interesting thing is that we find the names of the Armenians, or the name that they give to themselves, namely Haik, um, which is also the name for the country. So um, in early accounts of the history of Armenia, these forms are actually called uh, the Patmutun Hayots, the history of the Armenians themselves. Um, the etymology both of Haik and also of the foreign appellation uh, Armenia is not really clear. So there are various possibilities, but none is actually decisively convincing. So let us kill him and raid into Armenia and fill our realm with plunder. So, Apa Shurjitsav Tagavorn. Then the king changed his mind. Literally, he turned round, Shurjitsav. Yevlovav Banitsen, Banitsuratsen Yurots. And he listened to the words of his army. Yev Kalan Zimi Amehi, and they took uh, a wild horse, Kapetsin Kachetsin as Manuk and Grigoris Zagvo Zioin, and they bound, hanged and bound young Grigoris to the tail of the horse and drove him over the plain along the shore of the Great Northern Sea, the plain of Vatnaya, outside their camp. So this is the rest of the phrase. The word uh, Zi that we have here is worth a commentary, it is the Armenian word for horse that may be compared with Sanskrit haya, horse. Probably this continues a participle gito, um, the goaded one, as it were. The inherited word for horse, ekwa, from Protein-European, is also attested in Armenian, but it has actually become the word for donkey. Another interesting Iranian loan word is amehi, untamed, literally without mitra, that is, contract or rule. The same Iranian word of the god of contract, Mitra, also occurs, for example, in Mehean temple in Armenian. This shows that this god was one of the most revered deities in pre-Christian Armenia, since the name for places where he was worshipped, uh, Mitrayana as it were, equaled simply a temple in general. So the king changed his mind and Gregoris met his death outside the camp. Yev Aispis Espanin Zarakin Zarakini Karosen Christosi Ösmanuken Grigoris. So and in this way they killed the virtuous preacher of Christ, the young Grigoris. A word that merits a commentary here is that uh, Armenia in the early days of Christianization was heavily under the influence from Syria and Syria Christianity. And a trace of this can be seen in early loanwords related to the Christian context. One of these is the word karozen that we have here, uh, the preacher, the messenger, which comes from Syria, karoza. And another instance is, of course, the word for priest, kahana, which goes back to the Syriac word for priest, kahna. 
So this concludes a brief look at one of the most fascinating texts that has come down to us in classical Armenian, the Buzandaran Patmatyung. Shnora Kalosyun, Zer Ushadrutsyan Hamar. Thank you for your attention.